Croy Beerman. The Victim Explodes. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Narcissists have victims. It's a little bit like cheese and crackers. They go together. Or love and marriage, as Frank Sinatra once sang. The victim, and the term is applicable to anybody that's had an interaction with the narcissist, even though they might necessarily consider themselves a victim, because the narcissist always takes in some shape or form, even if it's benign. The traditional image of the victim is, of course, the individual that has been drawn into a romantic ensnarement and has found themselves suffering the brutal, sustained devaluation. The person that they thought that they loved turns out to be someone else altogether. They were emotionally invested. Their heart has been broken. They may have suffered physically, financially, sexually, psychologically. Relationships could have been damaged, and therefore they find themselves the victim of various manipulative behaviours and various abuses. But it's not just in the romantic field. It will happen within a family. It could be a neighbour. It could be a colleague. There are lots of ways that a narcissist will interact with different people and make them our victims. Even if you haven't ostensibly been treating badly, the narcissist is taken from you because the narcissist will have drawn fuel from you, gained a character trait from you, obtained a residual benefit. And therefore, the interaction is not an honest, authentic one. The narcissist is not genuine with you. You are simply there to serve a purpose for the existence of the narcissist. Many victims who find themselves subjected to repeated devaluing behaviour from the narcissist get to a point where, to put it simply, they explode. There are those that have super-empathy, from whether it's an insignificant through to a majority aspect, who go into a mode of empathic supernova. This is repeatedly misunderstood by people who seem to think that if they are some kind of kick-ass ninja Heoka individual, that this is the empathic supernova. It is not. If you want to understand what it is and how it occurs, I would encourage you to listen to my videos The empathic supernova, the super empath, and empathic supernova versus cliff fightback. It's actually, in fact, the cliff fightback that's more common, which is an instance where the victim has had enough so that their emotional empathy has become eroded and that they feel, in effect, on the edge of a cliff. They either go over or they fight back. And in some instances, it can be quite the fight back even leading to a point where an empathic victim could kill a narcissist as part of that fight back. Aside from the issue of a fight back or an empathic supernova, there are instances where a victim can explode, quite simply because their emotional empathy has become eroded to a point that their argumentativeness, their anger, both narcissistic traits, come to the fore and kaboom. It's not a cliff fight back, they're not on the edge of the cliff, they're not in last chance saloon, they're not backed into a corner, but nevertheless, they still have an explosive response as a consequence of the way that they have been treated. There is an incident that has just been reported in relation to two relatively well-known individuals, Croy Beerman and Kim Zolciak. If you're not familiar with the two of them, I'll give you a little bit of background. Croy Evan Beerman, who was born in 1985, is a former American football outside linebacker. He was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the fifth round of the 2008 NFL Draft. He was born in Montana. He earned eight letters at Hardin High School, three in football, three in wrestling, and two in track. He played 52 career games in college and eventually ended up playing for the Atlanta Falcons. He participated back in May 2010 in a Dancing Stars of Atlanta charity event at which he met Kim Zolciak. More about her later. 
They had a son, Croy Jagger, who was born on May the 31st, 2011, and the couple wed at their Roswell, Georgia home on November the 11th, 2011. Zolciak became pregnant again, and son Cash Cade was born on August 15th, 2012. On November 25th, 2013, their twins Kaya Rose and Kane Wren were born. They certainly like the letter K, don't they? In March 2013, Beerman filed to legally adopt Zolciak's daughters, Brielle and Ariana, from her previous relationship. When the adoption became final in July 2013, the girls changed their last names to Beerman. So a little bit of background about him. An individual who was an American footballer, who had a number of children with Kim Zolciak, and also took on her existing two children, adopting them. What about Kim Zolciak? Well, she was born in 1978, so a good seven years older than him. And she's an American television personality and entrepreneur. She is best known as an original cast member of the Bravo reality television series The Real Housewives of Atlanta. She starred in five and recurring in one of the 14 seasons. She was also in Dancing with the Stars, although she didn't compete. She was born in Pensacola in Florida to a military family and grew up in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Age 17, she had an affair with a Windsor Locks police sergeant who had interviewed her as a material witness in a criminal investigation, initially resulting in the officer's firing, which was later changed to a 45-day suspension without pay. She appeared on the reality television series The Real Housewives of Atlanta when she was 29. And then, between seasons four and five, Zolciak and her then fiance were the subject of a spin off show, Don't Be Tardy for the Wedding, chronicling her wedding preparations. She left Real Housewives in the middle of the fifth season, and then Don't Be Tardy for the Wedding, later renamed to Don't Be Tardy, is in its eighth season as of 2020. She was scheduled to star in a new reality show on Bravo with fellow Real Housewives cast member Nene Leakes but the network decided not to move forward with the show. She's also had a musical career, working on a country music album. And in 2013, her Real Housewives of Atlanta castmate Candy Burress and her collaborating songwriter filed suit against Zolciak for profits earned from Tardy for the Party. In the documents filed, Burress's attorney alleges her clients wrote the song for Zolciak and that Zolciak released and sold the single without their authorization, license or consent. Back in 2016, she launched a line of skincare products. She stated publicly that she's bisexual and that she and DJ Tracy Young were in a romantic relationship. She was married to someone called Darian Toki, or I beg your pardon, Daniel Toki. They married in twenty, uh, married in two thousand and one, and they divorced just two years later. She had a daughter from a previous relationship, Brielle Karina, who was born in nineteen ninety seven. She had a child with Daniel Tosi named Ariana Laney, and then, of course, as you heard, she's had four children with Beerman. In March 2013, there was the adoption. In May 2023, Beerman filed for divorce from Zolciak after 11 years of marriage, citing their date of separation as April 30th. But then in July 2023, it was confirmed that they withdrawn their divorce filing. But then in August 2023, he refiled for divorce from Zolciak. So plenty of drama going on in this relationship. And it has been repeatedly spoken about with regard to financial problems that the two have and a somewhat tempestuous relationship which has resulted in a recent appearance in the Daily Mail where the moment Croy Beerman accuses narcissist Kim Zolciak of fucking other men ex-NFL star claims their lives are over in explosive body cam footage of a screaming match after one of their young kids called 9111 
A disturbing verbal fight between Kim Zolciak and her estranged husband, Croy Bierman, is now coming into focus with the release of police body cam footage. Video recorded at the scene of a fight from November shows Bierman screaming at the 45-year-old former Real Housewives of Atlanta star as officers arrive to break up the argument. In the footage obtained by TMZ on Wednesday, the 38-year-old former NFL player accuses his estranged wife of being a narcissist and even shouts that she has been fucking other men. The video clip offers new context to the shouting match, which was so intense that one of the couple's four youngest children called 911 for help. The article then takes us through what's gone on in the video in some detail with various photographs taken from the body cam footage as the police officer deals with a clearly angry beerman and a sobbing Zolciak. Is this a situation of a victim having had enough of the way that he's treated so in a sense he responds with what is known as reactive abuse that he's verbally offensive towards his wife that he shouts at her that he's argumentative that he possibly issues threats that causes him also not only to be verbally abusive towards his wife but that he is aggressive towards police officers it's certainly the case that an individual who has been subjected to repeated abuses will have their emotional empathy reduced to the extent that they explode themselves. I've explained elsewhere that in certain instances a super empath may respond with the empathic supernova, that other instances the empathic individual is forced back onto the cliff edge and they have either the choice of going over or fighting back and thus they fight back but there can be instances where the abuse is such that it's not a fight back but the victim explodes notwithstanding the fact that they have emotional empathy but it's been reduced here you're going to see the various interactions and you're going to see the way that an apparent victim of a narcissist has exploded as a consequence of what he's been taking he explains in essence that their lives have been ruined that they haven't got any money that she's been with other men and therefore these external stresses have impacted upon him to the extent that he has exploded but you'll also see that Zolciak suggests that she's the victim she doesn't explode but in actual fact is in tears claiming that he has been abusive and aggressive towards her. What I'm going to let you do is see the footage, and then in a separate video, I'm going to break down what's going on. But in the meantime, I'd like you to keep these key points in your mind. Is this a narcissist, her, as he accuses of being, and he's the victim? Or is he the narcissist, and she's the victim? Or is it a case of two narcissists colliding? I've given you some background to the individuals, which may well help with your decision-making, but I'd like you to watch the video and apply your learned skills to what you see. And then let me know your thoughts in the comments section ahead of my analysis video, which will then be provided. I look forward to seeing your educated and fulsome observations. Here comes the body cam footage. Hey, police! Come here, Mr. Beerman. Beerman, come, come talk to me. What's going on? It's just a bunch of nonsense. All right, come talk to me. Ma'am, stay right there. What's going on tonight? We're just having an argument. About what? About our wife. Okay, what what happened? What, why, All right, it's why our about, life. It's destroyed. Why, but, okay, what started the argument? Her inability to solve problems. Okay, or address come over, or do anything. Come over here. Why? Because I want to talk to you away from her. I don't want her to start screaming at you and and have a whole it's, argument. It's, it's nothing but an act. It's all a bunch of bullshit. What? What is? Everything she does. Okay, what does she do tonight? Everything. Everything, dude. I, I can't. I'm not going to do this because this right here does nothing but fuel her bullshit. I'm not doing this. 
This is narcissistic behavior. I'm not doing this. I'm just trying to figure out what the There's nothing is. to do. You shouldn't even be here. Who it called was, you? Your kids. Who, what kid? You have kids? I don't know. Whoever's in the house. So We've what, been outside what, this whole time. What, 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 what was the argument about? Our life! What, our life! Okay, and it's so destroyed! Why, why is it getting so heated? Because our life is destroyed! What don't you understand? There's no money. There's no house. She wants, we're, we're getting divorced one day and we're not the next. Okay. She's f***ing other men. What do you want? Just calm down. Calm down, but I don't have a f***ing life. And I don't have somebody who won't f***ing listen to me. Calm down. Oh, calm down. You want to live this mother f***ing? Uh, you wouldn't have you wouldn't lasted for down. a year. <laughs> you wouldn't have lasted a day in this f***ing house. told you we're arguing because of our f***ing life and you don't even need to be here you're still asking questions i don't want to f***ing answer them all right well can you just have a seat then no i don't need to yeah you do you need to calm hold down on. hold up hold up i don't need to hold up you guys don't even need to be here well we got called nobody right called now. you what's going on mr Freeman? I just like I'm, he's just been screaming at me for like two hours, like a crazy person, like a crazy person. Okay. What what was the argument? Why are we all arguing? Because I just said, Why is he I screaming? just want to get a divorce. Like I just want this to be over. Like, he wouldn't let me leave this morning. The gate like is broke or whatever, so you have to like manually open it. He jumped in front of my car. I have all these videos. Like he's blocking me from leaving. And he just started yelling. I said, "Cry!" I have a phone call at 5:30. I can't do this right now. <laughs> Sorry, like my nose is moving. That's fine. And then I left. I, I got, finally got out of the gate, and I was walking in my robe down the street. And I was like yelling for help to my neighbor, like, please, somebody help me. He's screaming, screaming in my ear, grabbing my robe, like the back hoodie of my of my robe, and my robe. I mentally, like, and physically, and emotionally, could not take this any any longer. And my kids, he's like, get out of the house. If I go, like, walk in, he kicks the kids out. And then if I go, if I come outside, he's like, get inside the house. And my son's like, mom, please take me, my friend. Mm -hmm. His dad said, no, you're not going anywhere. And so he's crying right now. It's just too much. This is, he's mentally ill, like for real. Like for real. Are you hurt in any way? No, I just, I just, in my ear, just screaming like a crazy person for mm -hmm. hours. When did this all start? This morning when I tried this to morning? leave. He stood in front of my car, banged on my glass. Oh, I was just scared the shit out of me when I was why, 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 Why was he doing that? Why, why wouldn't he let you leave? He never wants me to leave. I've been staying in the master, and he's down in the nanny's room. Downstairs, and I just live my life like I don't bother him. I don't mess around with him. He mm -hmm. just can't take it. So, this morning around what time? 11:30. Around 11:30. I had a hair appointment at 12 hours. I'm hiding in my car, but he stuck his arm through my window, so that the window stopped going up. This morning he did that. You're no, saying? just now. Like, I'm, I was blocking, putting my window up. I was talking to my son right here. And then he came over and stuck his arm through my window. So the window is, that's why it's down. Otherwise, I would not have my window down with this crazy person. Mm -hmm. But this is the only place I feel safe. And if I can get him to calm down, I can try to leave. This is why my car's back then. I never do this. Today, I did this when I got home from my hair appointment. So I can, like... So around 11 a.m. What is he doing? He's, he's talking to an officer. Oh, he's yelling something. Well, I need to know what's going on because... Your kid's called, so I need to know what's going on. Okay, Joe, I'll call you back, okay? Okay. You gotta talk to your kids. Okay. From what your kids have been saying, you guys have been arguing. No, I, so, I just saw I was you arguing. crying. No, no, he said he saw you crying. Your kids did not see, did not say anything turn physical. He said no. he thought he saw something, he but it sounded like more Croy was just trying to get you away from him, like putting his hand no, out he was like trying this. Trying to not let me leave. So. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, whatever. I'm just saying yeah. Croy was just doing this with his hand. And yeah, and and. Trying not to get me to leave, like like this, yeah, like, and like, that's, like this, out, out of the gate. I was trying yeah. to please leave me alone. Like I'm, I got it down the road. I was walking down the road in a bathroom, looking like an idiot, and he's screaming, "I don't give a fuck about these neighbors, you dumb." Bitch. Like just screaming in my ears okay. for like the last I, hour. I know. I get it's hard, no, and I get everything going on. Do you have any injuries? Like, just, like I'm on the floor, like yeah. please stop.
So it's kind of like the same thing last time with the wigs. You guys are just arguing about he something. Stole all my, he stole all my jewelry. I just found out that I've ever owned prior to my marriage. So, I mean, like, I don't even care. I, I don't, he doesn't want the divorce. That's the problem. Yeah. No, I, don't, I can't so see. So it's a for. Okay, so. <laughs> car lights in the driveway? It's a bunch. There's, there's, they're out in the street. So oh, I see lights there. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's maybe a flashlight. Yeah, it's a flashlight. Yeah, okay, it's a flashlight. Okay, okay. Yeah. My kids, I just want to make sure my kids so, and dogs are So running. y'all were arguing over the jewelry tonight. No, 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 no. He stole the jewelry. I just had to let it go. So what, start, what caused tonight? What started the argument tonight? Uh, nothing. I was This morning, he's like, this is your last chance to have a conversation. I said, I don't want to have a conversation. This, I just want a divorce. I can't. I don't want to do this. Like, just leave me alone. It's okay. And then I had to He's saying my, that. Like, he's yeah, saying that he doesn't, want, him, the, he doesn't yeah, want the He doesn't want the divorce. He doesn't want the divorce. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, and, and this person that I'm dealing with right now is not the same person that I married. So it's been hard for me to like make a decision because it's so sad. No, I know. Divorce, Crazy divorce sad. is, it's rough. Yeah, it's, but like it's mentally, hard. He's, he's not, like, he's, he's, if you could see him, like, he's, like, it's crazy. Like, I'm so scared. I don't. I how he behaves, but like this is not my husband. So in my mind, it's like I can get you, we can get you help, we can figure this out. But he doesn't have a problem, you know. So like, I have to leave. I, my kids are not. Or do you have a place to go tonight? Oh, I don't care. I'll, yeah, I'll go get a hotel room. I had to last week and last week as well. Okay, but right. nothing turned I'm physical. Screaming, like help no, me, no. Help so me. My, daughter, just, my other daughter called my older one. And let me like, just touch. You know, let me. I talked to the kids already, and I'm just touching bases here. Because I want to make sure I get all the sides. Because like I told you last time, there's three sides. Your side, Croy's side, and God's yeah. side. I, I've told you that, and I was fair yeah. last time, was I not? Yes, yeah, very. Okay. So, nothing turned physical tonight. You right. didn't put your hands on him. No. He didn't put your hands on you. No, he, just, he was just he trying was to prevent you from... The, yeah, he's being a bully. He was getting he your way. He took my phones, deleted all my voice notes. Like, you know when you record yeah. voice notes? Like, but he didn't, like, physically grab you to keep you in the house. He was just doing the bully thing of, you're not going to leave and just following you around. I can't but can't get out. Yeah. So, he's just following you around the house as you're trying to get out. I did. I was able to like get out and then. Um, okay. And like go down the. But sidewalk. that's what I'm saying. He didn't yeah. physically grab you and confine you and keep you. He, it was the whole. It's, it's, I'm not gonna let you. Yeah. You the bow went up. Like, yeah. And okay. Like, and, but he's so much bigger than me. You no. Know? So it's well, like, I, I don't, know. Trust me, I know. I don't, but you were like able to eventually get out and you start walking away and then you came back I'm on like, your I own. I was in my. He's like fake tears and fake bullshit and I'm like, God, please get me out of here. Please, please leave me alone. Kimberly, let me ask you this question. The when you got down the street, when you got down the street and you came back, you came back on your own accord. He didn't grab you and pull you down the street back here, correct? No, I have, this is me. I had nothing, no car keys, no nothing. That's what I'm saying. You came back, that's what I'm saying. You came back on your own accord. Yeah, he took my okay. phone. I had nothing to like Okay, with. and, and you're going like, to get a hotel embarrassed. tonight. Yes. Okay. Hang tight with this officer, okay? Um, don't tell him I'm getting a hotel. I'm no, I'm not going to tell him. I'm going to stay somewhere. No, else. you know how he is. Don't it, tell me. This is going to be, you know how it is. It's going to be like last time where we, there's going to be some arguing, there's going to be some yelling, so just ignore all that. Officers, you do not have the authority to be in my home. I'm Officer, you do not have the authority to be in my home. Officer. Officer, you do not have the authority to be in my home. You do not have the authority to be in my home. I did not give you permission to come in my home. Is he gone? Sir, I did not give you authorization to be in my home. You're going to get pushed for it. I did not give you authorization. I know my rights. I know my rights. Okay. Okay. Four. Okay. Right, come on. You're about to get bit. Because here's the thing, Croy. Here's the thing. Sir, Keep on. I did not give you authorization to be in my home. You're no, no. Get put, Corey, listen to me very I clear. did not give you authorization. I know Corey, my rights. Stop Corey. Talking. I know my rights. Okay, then stop talking if you know your rights. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you your rights. I'm going to inform you your rights. We're here for a lawful reason right. to investigate a domestic violence situation. Right, where the person is outside. Your kids are the ones that called. I need to talk to them. And I can bring them outside, but no. you do not have the authority no. to be in my home. You're going to stand outside with them. You do not have the authority to be in my home. You're going to go with them. All right, come on, Corey. I was, not, I was not clear what was going on. Now I am. Come on, let's go. We're going to need to step outside. No, I'm not going to leave him with my children. Okay. Well, my officers, and they got body cams on. No. They'll be fine. No. So.
In the driveway. Mm -hmm. Can we all leave the home or no? Not yet. Until he talks to her. So we can Once. stand outside? We can stand outside if okay, we want. Cool. So. Okay, you've seen the footage. Pretty dramatic. Plenty going on. Plenty of material there for you to utilise. What have you seen? Is this a case of she's the narcissist that has been repeatedly abusing him and he's got to a point whereby the sustained devaluation has caused the reduction in his own emotional empathy, so he's lashed out in the way that he has, not only towards her but also towards the police officers? Alternatively, is it the case that he's the narcissist and what you're seeing is heated, ignited fury and that he's lashing out at her and she's the victim? Is it a case of narcissists colliding? Based upon your own experience, the utilisation of my work, the background information that I've given in relation to these two individuals and, importantly, what you've seen in this video footage... Let me know your detailed thoughts in the comments section and then I will provide you with a video breaking down what we see. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.